Facebook and Twitter's CEOs testified before the Senate today in their second hearing in two months. Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey faced questions from the Judiciary Committee on the election and content moderation. The hearing was called after both platforms limited the reach of stories about President-elect Joe Biden's son from a New York Post article because of misinformation. Here's what both Zuckerberg and Dorsey said about the election. We've built sophisticated systems to protect against election interference that combine artificial intelligence, significant human review, and partnerships with the intelligence community, law enforcement, and other tech platforms. We've taken down more than 100 networks of bad actors who are trying to coordinate and interfere globally. We established a network of independent fact checkers that covers more than 60 languages. We made political advertising more transparent on Facebook than anywhere else. More than a year ago, the public asked us to offer additional context to help make potentially misleading information more apparent. We did exactly that, applying labels to over 300,000 tweets from October 27th to November 11th, which represented about 2.2% of all U.S. election-related tweets. So for more on this, I want to bring in CBSN tech reporter Dan Patterson. Hi, Dan. What did we learn from today's hearing about the election, about how these platforms dealt with information surrounding this election? So we learned some pretty interesting things that we haven't all year. Look, uh, if you're anything like me, you've probably kind of blurred all of these tech hearings together, and it's hard to kind of pick out which policies really matter. But today today was a little different. It seemed more cordial uh, going into the hearings, but we heard some really pointed questions asked of these two tech executives who run very large, huge uh, communications platforms. But although their size and scale are enormous, they're two very different companies with very different policies and very different chief executives running them. So what we saw today was a blend of policy and personality along with politics. So how much of today's hearing focused on the law called 230? I mean, this is this is the law. First, Dan, if you could remind our viewers, you know, what implications this law has. But this is the law that essentially, you know, makes Twitter and Facebook, they're off the hook for whatever users say on their platforms. Um, explain why pretty much everybody agrees it should be reformed to some degree at this point. So Section 230 of the Communication Decency Act means that tech platforms like Facebook and Twitter are not treated like publishers where they could potentially be liable for the content that they publish if it's illegal or otherwise. Uh, they're instead treated uh, like technology platforms. So this is considered to be a really foundational regulation that has formed the internet as we know it today. Um, back when Facebook, Twitter, and other companies were startups, young companies in the web era, it was really critical for them to be able to function um, in a nimble way. And so Section 230 kind of let them do that. But fast forward to today, we still acknowledge that Section 230 is incredibly important because we want to make sure that free speech or that speech of some sort is uh, not regulated, but it clearly needs uh, some sort of amendment or some sort of change. At least that's what the lawmakers and we heard from uh, the tech CEOs today uh, kind of agree to. So it's not really clear what that will look like, uh, but it seemed as though there was some sort of unison between what uh, policymakers and technology leaders wanted. So where I would imagine there isn't a lot of unison, though, is what, uh, you know, lawmakers on one side of the aisle want versus on the other side of the aisle. What points uh, did we hear Democrats and Republicans focus on today? You know, one of the most interesting questions uh, that was asked of uh, both Jack Dorsey and Mark Zuckerberg by Lindsey Graham was, uh, is social media addictive? And uh, look, I'm curious about this as well. Um, it, and they had two very different answers uh, that kind of looked like uh, two different parts of the partisan spectrum. Um, 
Jack Dorsey uh, acknowledged that he has not really dug in or watched uh, some of the documentaries about um, uh, social media addiction, but acknowledged that maybe it could have some interesting effects. We're not sure. There was some word salad. Mark Zuckerberg, on the other hand, also used word salad to pretty much say, no, I don't think so. We're building tools, <laughs> not addictive products. <laughs> Very, very interesting. So, Dan, what could come out of this hearing? What happens next? Could we see some actual legislation emerge? Well, if you believe the uh, senators uh, and if you believe the tech CEOs, yeah, it looks like through 2021, uh, they'd like to have a, a similar dialogue uh, and focus on a few things, which is uh, maybe consumer privacy. We will see Section 230 examined and we'll certainly continue to revisit this conversation about what is and what is not censorship when it comes to publishing content on major social media platforms. So uh, it looks like 2021 will be a fascinating year, just like this one was for social media firms. All right, Dan Patterson, we know you will be keeping close tabs on that. So thank you so much for joining us. Great to see you.